um, we have now the session of threshold implementations consisting of um, two talks. <coughs> Um, please note that uh, this, this session is followed directly by the first inverted talk, then, you, then please don't leave the hall. Um, the, talk, uh, the first talk of the session is titled um, Rhythmic Ketchuk, SCA Security and Low Latency in Hardware, um, authored by Viktor Aribas, Begol Bilgin, Georg Petrides, Svetlana Nikova, and Vincent Ryman from Kau Leuven. And now Viktor is giving the talk. Thank you, Amir, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, hackers can guess pins using your smartphone sensor data, or also as well-known uh, side channel information. Today, I bring you two topics. I'll start by uh, introducing key concepts to um, securely, successfully uh, secure this hardware. And second, I'll present a methodology that, uh, that we use to, to reduce the latency of uh, these secure implementations. So my talk is divided into two parts. First, I'll introduce uh, this concept, and then I'll continue by uh, introducing my methodology, the methodology we used for reducing the latency of these uh, secure implementations. So uh, let me start by introducing uh, two uh, masking schemes we used in our work. Threshold implementations, or TI, very well known already. Uh, this is an example of an AND gate, uh, first-order secure AND gate. Um, the inputs given in TI um, are dependent on the, degree, the algebraic degree of the function and the degree of security uh, that we want to achieve. A key property of TI is the or the non-completeness that is defined as follows. Uh, every T combination of output shares must be independent of one input share. So here in this example, we see that every output uh, is depending on only two shares, two input shares. Uh, second sharing scheme we use in our work is uh, domain-oriented masking, also known as DOM. Uh, in this case, uh, the input, the number of input shares is given only by the desired degree of security. It's important to note that we need uh, a layer of registers to secure this multiplier in order to synchronize randomization. Uh, and also, we need an extra property. We need the inputs to be independent of one another to ensure security. So I'll be focusing on these input dependencies, why they are dangerous, and uh, how they are caused. So uh, to illustrate that, I'll, I'll bring you a very small example. This is a DOM multiplier, x times y. Um, here we see the four cross products. There are two dangerous cross products that are mixing uh, the two shares that we use, right? So these are the two dangerous ones. Now, assuming our inputs are independent, we are safe, uh, and non-completeness is fulfilled. Then I bring you another small example, calculating uh, this operation, x times x shifted once. Uh, so we previously, um, before the um, nonlinear operation, we execute a linear operation. It could be whatever, even the identity function would work as well. So we see uh, the result of the linear function and then the result of the nonlinear function. Again, look at the cross products that are dangerous. Now, uh, due to these dependencies, we have non-completeness broken. There, this is uh, a security, an important security flaw. Uh, this previous example was pretty simple, was very, uh, maybe very obvious. But what happens when we have more uh, complex operations, like the theta step in, in Ketchak, that introduces these intricate uh, dependencies in the, in the state? Run-based implementations are very risky. Uh, and we found a flaw in previous round-based implementations in the literature using a DOM multiplier. This could lead to potentially exploitable leakage. We contacted the authors. Uh, they acknowledged our findings, and they updated their work in ePrint. Um, so I'll show a few implementations we did. 
Uh, first, we implemented uh, first order secure Ketchak implementation with uh, this DOM sharing scheme. Um, and we see, we saw that there was a, a leakage, a non completeness flow in G. And now I'll show you how we saw this leakage, how this leakage appears. So let me go over one round of Ketchak. First, we applied theta with these uh, intricate dependencies. We focus on these two bits, and let's see where they go. Then uh, we apply the row step. Row is just um, a shift uh, along the seat lane. Then it comes p. p is just uh, a shift in the x, y plane. Um, these last two are only wiring, so they, are, they don't uh, mean any problem. But then we have uh, the nonlinear permutation G, which combines these two bits we were looking at into just one bit failing on completeness. We found a total of 112 uh, bits failing this non-completeness non in this way out of 200 bits of the state uh, with a tool we, we implemented ourselves. <coughs> Um, uh, later, we evaluate this implementation with a test vector leakage assessment. We use 55 million traces for the evaluation. We test first with the countermeasure, switched off, we see huge leakage. We see how the T value, the blue graph, is way out of the uh, red threshold. Then we switch on the, the um, countermeasure, sorry, and we see small leakage uh, in the first order which uh, should have no leakage at all. It's small leakage, but we are not sure if we don't know if this could lead to an attack. So we propose a fix. Our fix uh, in our fix, we introduce a linear lay a layer of registers in the middle of the linear uh, permutations and the nonlinear permutation. This way, we break the dependencies created by this complex theta operation. And this way, we ensure non-completeness is fulfilled. We run our tool, and we see that, indeed, non-completeness is safe. We added a new layer of registers, so we tried to optimize that. We tried, then we merged the state register and, the, and this new layer of registers in order to reduce a bit more the latency, so that the latency is not affected that much. And the resulting implementation uh, is this one. So first we have the, the linear operations, then we have the state register, breaking the dependencies, and then already the nonlinear operation. We evaluate this implementation as well um, with the same setup. We don't change uh, anything in the setup. And then um, we get, indeed, uh, First order secure implementation with no leakage, and second order uh, huge leakage as we expected, right? So now uh, I'll continue with the second part of my talk. Uh, I'll let you. I'll tell you about the methodology I use for uh, securing these unrolled implementations. What's 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 our aim now? We want to halve the number of cycles in in our implementation. For that, we will need to avoid registers. And you've seen how, um, how this uh, DOM sharing scheme would need registers in order to break the, these dependencies. So now is when we, use, we will use TI in order to uh, successfully achieve this. To illustrate my methodology, I bring you a small example of a quartic operation, a four-bit, uh, a four-input AND gate. To secure it, we split the operation into two layers of quadratic operations, which we know better how to secure. In the first time, uh, we implement two first order uh, sharing schemes in both layers. So if we look at um, the input dependencies on the output of the first layer, and then we compute the second layer, every output will break non-completeness as TI needs it. So then what do we do? How do we fix this problem? We implement a, a second-order sharing scheme in the first layer and a first-order sharing scheme in the second layer. So this way, no output at the end is failing non-completeness. 
Why this works? Um, due to the two-bit nature of an AND gate, we know that the outputs of the first layer needs, need twice as much security uh, than the outputs of the second layer. So then we extend this methodology and we generalize for higher orders and higher de uh, algebraic degrees. We start uh, from the targeted DF degree of security of the last layer, and from there we crawl back to subsequent previous layers. So the current layer will depend on the algebraic degree and the degree of security of the next layer. So this methodology does not specify the sharing scheme to use. It just specifies the degree of security that every layer should have. We don't provide the, the randomness needed for uh, multivariate security. And it might not be the most optimal uh, design, but we aim, to, we aim this as a starting point towards uh, reduced and fastest uh, secure implementations. So we use this methodology to, to speed up our Ketchak implementations. And what do we want? We want to run, uh, to execute two rounds at once without registers in the middle. So with using the previous equations, we have that the first layer needs a second order sharing and the first layer needs a first order sharing since the nonlinear operation used in Ketchak is algebraic degree two, and we are aiming for a first order secure implementation. First, we use this sharing scheme with five inputs in the first layer and uh, 10 outputs of the first layer. Then second layer will use te these 10 outputs, compressing them to five outputs. To five, yes, five outputs in the second layer. Then uh, this was not very optimal because there are a lot of shares involved. So we tried to optimize this and we found uh, six to six sharing a scheme that we can apply for both layers. So I'll talk a bit more in detail of this 6 to 6 sharing scheme. If you are interested on the uh, 5 to 10, you can, you can check the paper. So first layer has uh, these dependencies. We, every output has, uh, uses three input shares in the, in, in the way we see in the slide. And then second layer uses, in the same way, three input shares, in this case, the outputs from the first layer. And then with this, we get that at the very output of the second layer, every output share is missing at least one input share from the inputs, in the way we see in the slides. Um, we evaluate this, uh, this design as well with the same test we used in the pre for the previous evaluations. We get that uh, masks off with countermeasure switch off indeed leaks as expected. And uh, when we switch on the, um, the countermeasure, we see that first order doesn't leak. This expected. And second order and third order, they don't leak either. And this is due to the uh, great number of shares we are using. Six shares generate a lot of noise, which cover the, um, the leakage in the second and third order. Uh, to finish with my talk, I conclude with wrapping up with uh, the contributions. We discovered a flaw in previous round-based uh, secure implementations of Ketchak. We fix it, we propose a fix, we analyze the causes and evaluate them practically. And then later, uh, second fold, we give a methodology to secure unrolled uh, implementations, which is very related for, to the previous one. And then we propose the fastest Ketchak known to date in the literature, which is uh, 70K gate equivalent, and it takes 20.61 nanoseconds to compute. Uh, that was all on my part. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any question. Thank you, Victor. Any questions? 
Yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, on slide 21. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I just wanted to, to be sure. So uh, when you look at the, 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 the graph on the, so the first graph, you mm -hmm. say that there is no leakage, but for me, uh, there is a peak achieving the threshold. So why do you, see, do you say that there is no leakage? Well, I see that it is 4.5, but that it's a spike that went at that point and then it goes down, it went up and down, so it's uh, due to the statistical test, but we don't think it's a leakage since it went up and down during the test, so we don't, fi we don't find it as a potential leakage. Okay, so you, you, tested, uh, you tested this point and uh, you, 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 yes, check, you yes. verify that uh, it, it's yeah. not a leakage? Yeah. And, and uh, the second question I had is um, you, you achieve some security with uh, six shares. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have an idea of the optimal, of optimal number of shares needed to, to achieve your goal? Is six a good? Mm, for, my, for my implementation, six was the most optimal in the way we wanted to achieve it, in the sense you cannot achieve uh, this second order non-completeness we look for if you go uh, under six shares. Because the combination you have to do for uh, input shares cannot satisfy this non-completeness if you go lower than five shares. It can only, if you go uh, lower to five input shares, as we aimed at the beginning, you need uh, to expand it in order to satisfy all the combinations. Okay. So that and no combination uh, fails non-completeness. Okay, this is true for your construction, or do you think it's true for any any way how to implement uh, the? I think it's true for any implementation that wants to achieve uh, this this objective using TI. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question? We have time for one more question. No. Then can you get to a slide number, uh, slide number 19? Yeah. Um, yeah, or even the next one doesn't matter. But um, can you just um, say something about the amount of fresh randomness that you need to add here between these two stages? Do you need any or no? Uh, we don't add extra randomness. We rely on, so we, you saw uh, the dependencies that Theta creates. Mm -hmm. So we rely on the, uh, the independency of bits of other S-boxes of the same state to act as uh, that fresh randomness. So that you only need this layer of registers in order to synchronize that um, sum of bits. OK. Thank you. OK, if, if there is no more question, then let's um, thank uh, Victor again. Thank you.